who is ready for some chuckle therapy? I have never laughed so much making a video. It's contagious, so be warned. Hello, lovely couples, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, wedding planner and owner of Bluebird Creative. I provide a weekly dose of wedding planning goodness for the modern couple. So if you've just got engaged, congratulations, and you are in the right place. This week's funny. It really, really has tickled me. So please be warned, laughing is contagious and you may catch it. It may not be stuff that you would have laughed at if you had read it, maybe you would, but when I give you the facts and the details perhaps behind why this is not a good idea, then you may be laughing with me. So let's just jump on in to this week where I am going over seven pieces of wedding planning advice that I have found on the internet, in blogs, on YouTube, or just heard in my career that have made me laugh. <sighs> let's go. Let's start off with a banger, shall we? So this piece of advice, cracking, absolutely cracking. Don't have a seating plan, just go for open seating. It will save you time on having to write a seating plan and it will also save you having to work out the family dramas that may be in your family. Um, no. <laughs> Let's just, just picture this for me, okay? You have your guests walking into the wedding breakfast room. They'll be assuming that there's a seating plan because that's kind of how things tend to go and we are creatures of habit. So, so they'll first of all be looking for the seating plan, which, you know, they'll realise that they can't find. Then they'll be thinking, okay, so do we just sit anywhere? Do we... Do, what do we do? So you'll probably have a load of guests wandering around not really sure what to do, unless you've got a sign that says, pick a seat. In which case, just imagine people literally are like, okay, I don't really know where to sit. So they're gonna go and sit down anywhere, but then actually there's not enough space for their whole family because another couple have sat down there and there's only one seat left. So you have to break up the parties. And actually then you end up with two people over there, but single seats over there chaos. How long do you think that is going to take for people to find their seats? Then, get this, you have allergies. People have food allergies. So as the meals are coming out, do they know where they're taking the food? Do they know who is the pescatarian, who's a vegan, who's got the nut allergy, who's dairy free? No, because they don't know where anyone's sitting. <laughs> insane guys like just absolutely no no if you've read this and thought that sounds good because you know table plan seating plan nightmare to organize yes it takes time but you really do <laughs> you really need it so don't listen to that advice okay <laughs> just no no the next piece of advice i have heard is to <laughs> the next piece of advice i have heard is to have your phones during the ceremony so, <laughs> so you can get more photos. <laughs> I can't stop laughing at this one. I just, just know. You have a professional photographer. You have paid no doubt a lot of money for your professional photographer who is amazing at getting those photos. They know what photos to get. They know when they're gonna happen and they are on it. They're in the right position. If you have Tom, Dick and Harry all sticking their cameras out into the aisle or standing up, they're going to get in the photographer's way, who you have paid money to hire, to employ for your day. And they're going to have a crap shot with people with phones in the air. Just, it's not necessary. Have your guests focusing on you and your ceremony and have the photographer do their job. Choose the right photographer. You don't need people with their phones. I have seen a video where a photographer has had to actually shove the mother of the bride or the mother of the groom out the way because she was trying to take a photo of the couple having their first kiss Yes, their first kiss with her phone. If the photographer had not got that shot, how unhappy would you be if you'd paid a photographer? That is a crucial moment. And if she hadn't got it and it instead got the mother of the bride just in the shot with her camera, can you imagine? She's had to physically move her out the way. No phones, don't, I mean, you can have phones, but don't tell people to use their phones to capture more pictures of your ceremony. I mean, what? Okay, this one is not so much funny, but it makes me chuckle a bit. It probably won't make you laugh, but it's when people turn around and say that marquee weddings are cheaper. Have a marquee wedding because, and like a back garden wedding, like in a marquee, because it'll be cheaper because you're not paying like for the property, you're, it's your land. 
I mean, this makes me chuckle because, no, I mean, you are paying for the marquee, you are paying for the flooring, you are paying for the generators, you are paying for the lighting, you are paying for the toilets, need I go on? Okay, just, no, I, like, we will talk about this. I have a video coming on marquee wedding, so we will get into that. Just, just, that's not right. <laughs> It makes me laugh. Okay, this is a good one. Have a bring your own booze wedding. It will save you money on having to have a bar. I mean, <laughs> I have visions of a 21 year old like house party <laughs> where people are bringing their own booze in a plastic bag and then hiding it in corners of the room because they're like, that's mine. Don't touch that, that's mine. I've bought enough for me. I mean, what are they going to do at the wedding? They're going to, if there's a table for the booze, they're going to be like, but I bought the Jack Daniels because that's what I want and someone else has opened it. And now there's not going to be enough because I've only bought enough for me. That's not going to work. And they're not going to be hiding it around the room in their plastic bags so that nobody can take their booze. It just, I just can't see how it's going to work. Can you <laughs> just have a bar? Just have a bar. Just have people buy their drinks at the bar. It's so much easier. This is a good one. So if you're having a destination wedding, it's when someone turns around <laughs> and suggests that you, to save money, these are always money saving tips, aren't they? The worst money saving tips. It's when somebody suggests that, well, if we're all just going away for the whole weekend for your wedding, let's just have the stag do and the hen do the same weekend as the wedding. So we tie it all up in one. So hen and stag do like Friday and then wedding Saturday and then, you know, a brunch or whatever on Sunday. Um... <laughs> No, unless you want the bride and groom turning up to the wedding in no doubt an absolute state, unless they have a dry hen or stag do, which let's be honest, is probably very uncommon. I mean, if that's your thing, you do you. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just probably not how the majority of the population would go. I mean, just no. Any hen do that I've ever been on, I have not been feeling my best the next day. So let's just remember that if anyone suggests that to you. Remember how you feel even just on a night out. Remember how you feel the next morning. Do you want to feel like that on your wedding day? Just saying. This one made me chuckle. This is a piece of advice I've probably heard actually. <laughs> So the advice is have some background music playing when the speeches are read, just so that there's not any awkward silences and so that they don't feel so nervous when they're doing the speeches. I'm going to say no, don't do that, okay? People, if they're a bit nervous, are probably going to talk quietly anyway. They should have a microphone at all times. Little heads up and tip there. But having background music is probably going to distract them, for starters, and it's going to make it difficult for you to hear them. <laughs> so don't do it. I have been to a wedding before where the musicians, this is a good one, the musicians during the ceremony continued to play throughout the whole ceremony. <laughs> and we couldn't hear any of the vows. And the couple, <laughs> they had written their own beautiful vows and I have no idea what they were because the musicians just carried on playing throughout the whole thing. It was terrible. So no, don't have music whilst there's any form of speech going on. Let the focus be on the speech and just get rid of the extra noise, it's not necessary. <laughs> and finally, another tip that makes me chuckle, or not chuckle, it's actually a bit worrying, so it's probably not as funny, but I just wanted to group it in with this video. And that's when friends say, you're really good with flowers, are you gonna do your own wedding flowers? Don't do that. That's just, I mean, how do you picture your wedding morning? Do you picture being with your bridesmaids and your closest friends and getting ready together, having your hair and makeup done, enjoying a glass of Prosecco, just having a really lovely morning of pampering and just you time? Or do you wanna be really stressed, getting sweaty, trying to install the flowers that you've made, making sure that all the tables are done properly? I just don't think you wanna be doing that the morning of your wedding. So have a little rethink. If you want to make your bouquet and the bridesmaids bouquets and the buttonholes, I can see that working. If you want to do all your wedding flowers, I just don't think so. I mean, again, it depends how you envisage your morning. So as I always say, you do you. But 
I just don't think it's very realistic, to be honest. So anyway, guys, those are seven pieces of advice that I have found that have really tickled me and made me laugh. And I hope that they have made you laugh today as well and that you can see why perhaps they are not the best pieces of advice. And I would perhaps steer clear of those and try and come up with another idea or alternative. There's plenty of alternatives to those particular pieces of advice, so I'm sure you will be fine. I hope you enjoyed this week's video, guys. If you do need some good advice for your wedding planning or some good tips and assistance, then as always, there are some great freebies down in the description box for you below. And I've got a link to my web shop where you can grab all my digital products, which will help you with your wedding planning. Or as always, just send me an email and get in touch if you want some one-to-one -one help and a power hour so I can help you get through any of your sticking points and give you some good advice and not laughable advice. <laughs> but we do laugh, we do laugh, but in a good way. Guys, have a fantastic week and I will see you next week for some more wedding planning goodness. See you later. <laughs> okay, the next piece of advice. <laughs> So the next piece of advice that I have heard is <laughs> the next piece of advice that I have heard is to use your phone. <laughs>